All right, thanks for staying with us now. Referencing politics of ethnicity in Nigeria, the way forward by Collins G. Adeonju. In Nigeria today, tribalism has been elevated to dominate national discourse, controls how people think and talk, and determines what they oppose or support. It is promoted by the political elites, embraced by the young and the old, passed from generation to generation, and even has base in the constitution. Ethnicity has played manifesting roles in Nigerian politics since the pre-colonial era and is arguably one of the important causes of conflict and overall obstacle to economic development of the country. Now, a lot of uh, has happened during um, this election season, and today we're asking, right, how can we heal from the tribal division that, you know, that we all witness. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so, I mean, this conversation, I don't even know where to start from because I saw somebody talking about uh, that after now, they should go and tell parents to start raising their children not to, not to um, do intertribal marriages. You know, there were just so many things that came out of this election. I didn't understand how bad we have, we have become as a people. Until I started seeing what was in the content of the hearts of people. Like, it was really bad. Honestly, my sister blocked people, unfollowed people. It was, I said, so how many can I block? How many can I unfollow? Right? It's, it's just a sad situation that, it, and where we are today, the most interesting thing is that the elite, they don't know tribe. They don't know all of these divisions, but they are the ones that actually propagate it. And the people that are the drivers of this tribalism and all of that, they are at the grassroots. A rich man does not have, oh, this one is evil, don't do business with him. If that person would bring money to his, he would collect the money and they will continue. But you see, it is, the sad thing is that it is the ignorant and the poor people, right? that continue to fight these battles, you know, continue to fuel these things. While these people are just throwing the money at them, they keep on fanning the flames of tribalism and all of that and see where we are today. What <coughs> happened on Saturday, I think, <coughs> I have been so speechless, I didn't even know what to say. That somebody will come to a polling unit, they will profile you based on your, tra your, your, your tribe and say, because of this tribe, you cannot vote. They physically assault, they physically attack, you know, I feel, and I said this yesterday on the show, the only way we can move forward, the person in charge of Lagos State, I'm not talking about other states because I don't know about the tri tribal whatever that happened in other states, but in Lagos State, the only way we can move forward, we have to hear from the governor himself, right? Because I don't even know how now people can look at each other and not be worried that would you harm me tomorrow, would you not harm me and all of that. Because... There was genuine fear in the hearts of people. People were afraid to come out. People were afraid, you know, to do anything. You know, you not hear things like, oh, I want, I want, I want chinedu lele, won't be by. Like, you know, the chinedus are much, much here. You know, I, I was hearing all sorts of comments. And I was now wondering, where did, how did we get to where we are today? And if we want to even find a solution, where do we start from? Let me come to you, Isi. Then I'll come back to the studio. What's how you want, man? That is, uh, how, do we, how do we rise above this? How do we heal is a, is a crucial question that we need to answer. And all I can think of is, there was a narrative that was you know, thrown at us as a people. And that narrative was the tribal card. And we actually invited it, we took it, hook, line, and sinker, and we actually ran with it to the extent that the neighbor that we, we drank tea with, the neighbor that we sat with, the neighbor that we went for the baby's dedication became an enemy to us because of election and politics. You know, there, there have been different things that we've said earlier, uh, and we have, we, have, we have three things that actually causes a ruckus or disagreement. It, one is politics, the other is um, race, and the last one is religion. 
we have been able to merge all three of these things together. The race card was played with us with the tribal card. We've been able to merge religion. We've been able to merge um, um, what's it called uh, tribes. We've been able to also merge the politics and cause so much disunity in the system. The only thing that can change this narrative now is those that gave it to us are able to take it back. And this is where the government actually comes in. How we started was we do not like the next person. The, these people are coming in to take over this situation. They're coming in to take over this environment. I don't want to call names. But if the government plays the role of changing the mindset of the people, working on that divisiveness that is in the system currently and making it, um, making people understand that it is not what we think it is and not riding on it and changing the narrative that, oh, we are one and there is unity in this country. That is the first step to our healing process. Mm. All right, so let me come back. The mindset needs to be changed. Absolutely. Let me come back to the studio and I want to hear your thoughts, NJ. So for me, um, Nigeria is a country that has well over about 371 or so tribes and about, what, 250 ethnic groups. So we're very... As if you don't pass that number. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. So um, we, we are very diverse in religion, culture, a whole lot of things, but we've chosen to come together as a nation. Now, mm -hmm. playing those cards, just like EC said, those are the three cards that are played for us in this country every time. And even in Africa, generally, mm -hmm. it's always religion, um, religion, tribe, and, you know, mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, so what happened on Saturday, in my opinion, just showed how far racism and tribalism has gone, like how deep it has eaten into the roots. And we have been pretending for a long time that we love our neighbor until mm -hmm. just a small thing, just a small spark. And the whole country went off in flames and we could see it in every part. So it now became a thing, you know, even when it came to the parties, you know, there were, you know, all the parties started forgetting that different members of different ethnic groups joined different parties. But all of a sudden, it became a play of tribalism. This mm -hmm. group is against this group, this one's that, and these are the things that cause divide within the country. So in order, just to wrap it, I would say that if there's anything that we need to do as a country, is to reorientate ourselves continuously and intentionally. That if we, and to see ourselves that if we do want and do want to possess that one Nigeria kind of unity, where we all come together and see ourselves as human beings first, Nigerians second, and then forgetting all this tribal, you know, you're from the East, you're from the West, and seeing it, seeing all of us just come together in order to, for one aim, and that aim is to improve the country. Because really, one ethnic group can't live without the other. The Eastern part of Nigeria is known for different things, you know, different trades. The, uh, the Western, the Northern part of Nigeria is known for different trees. So everyone has their own speciality. They, bring, they have what, something unique that they bring. Yes, the and that is the reason why we decided to come together. So in trying to divide us when it comes to politics, we should remember and bear in mind that after politics, there's still life. Mm, there's, there's... So because now, how do you look at someone who you clearly know that during the electoral you know, campaign and elections... Mm -hmm had were strong, you know, uh, promoters of this tribalism. Mm. How do you look yeah. at them? And it also goes to show, like uh, Uwa said, is the elite. Because I've been in, in the midst of certain conversations, and they throw it up. And they keep throwing it up because they know that when they throw it up that much, you don't have any other thing you are thinking about. When 
you go outside the country, they have food, clothing, shelter, so they have time to love their country. But in this country, there's a lot of poverty. So people don't, they would buy whatever, you know, you're feeding me, so what you say is king. Mm -hmm. And it's quite pathetic. And Very quite, sad. It's a sorry case. Sad. And if we do not do something about it, this is one thing that will surely destroy Nigeria. Hmm. Surely. We hope not. Mary, your thoughts? This is a very hard one, I must say. I, I really have to say. But um, I think we have to start looking past it. Looking past it in the sense that the change that we want comes from us. In as much as we have um, family, friends with different political views, We've seen people air out their, um, to us it might be nonsense, to them it seems like they're making sense, but love, love heals. And if you can go past that, it's going to be hard because like I have someone who on Instagram and I've just been asking myself, is there a reason why you haven't blocked this guy? Because everything, he's my age mate, everything he says is just the, like you would think that this is someone, you know, maybe from my mother's generation so I can say, oh, he's older or something. And like, it doesn't just make sense to me. But I've, I'm now coming to understand that I have a perspective. You as an individual, you have a perspective. Your experiences have formed your perspective. And the tribalism matter is deeply rooted. Mm -hmm. I hear side comments from my mom, like um, they were doing an election in church, and she said, I know they won't pick me. It's evil. It's an evil thing. Like, she just said it casually, and she said it's so innocent. Like, she didn't really mean anything, but it's something that, that she, you know, she has faced, and she's just, mm, that's what it is. And I'm thinking, mm -mm, this is the root of where it starts. You know, you go to church and it feels like, you know, different ethnic groups have formed a community. But what we can do is we are now enlightened, yes? Social media has helped us. If we decide the same way we said, let's end brutality, the same way we can stand as a people to say, we want this tribalism to stop. It is going to be very hard. But the more we focus on love, because... I'm going to come at it from a spiritual point of view. If someone drops dead, you're not thinking, where is this person from? Whoever it is, even if the person has hurt you, you will feel really, really bad because that's a life that has gone. We have one being, whether Muslim, whether it is, everybody knows that there's something that controls the world. And so therefore, if we can focus on that to say, Let's try and spread love. It comes from when you hear these hateful, spiteful comments, either you choose to ignore or you pass a love comment, you know, to just say, I, I, I don't understand why you think this way, but that's fine. This is your perspective. It's okay. I, as a citizen, I see you as a human being. I recognize your identity as a, a human being, and I would respect you for that. Mm. We can do it. It's going to be tough, I must say. But we that were enlightened, let's try. And if you spread love, <laughs> I believe it would work. I can it's feel your passion. <laughs> it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the election aftermath. We're asking how do we deal from, or how do, how do we heal, rather, from the tribal division. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember? Can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow. Now, our phone line is now open. The number to call is 70 Remember to roll, turn off the volume of whatever device you're watching us from and so we can hear ourselves. You know, I was asking innocently because Mary is Mary Oma Williams. I don't know where she's from. I don't think I've ever I've ever used tribe as the criteria to deal with people, right? Mm -hmm. So where are you from, Mary? I don't know. I'm being serious. <laughs> I don't know where you're from. I'm from Delta State. You're sure? Delta. Oh, Delta. Really? Yeah. okay. Oh, so, so so when you were talking about love, it's so sweet and so whatever. But you see, I think where we are right now, if empathy cannot be drawn, right, from the situation, laws can be made, right? Laws can be made that ensures that 
there are penalties when anything like hate speech or whatever or tribal bigotry is exhibited. There are laws that would now say, you know what, you will go to jail or you, you know, something. Now, two things. Were there mistakes that were made in the Lagos campaign by other opposing uh, parties? Yes. Because statements like Lagos is in no man's land is a wrong statement to make. Most definitely. Because guess what? You are not being fair to the owners of Lagos. So that was a mistake that was made. But guess what? That was the same thing that was used to incite more of that tribal, um, what's it called, bigotry that happened. You mm -hmm. want to sit down. They come and take your land away from you. They come and take mm -hmm. your home away from you. They will come into your house and steal from you. So mm -hmm. it was because of that statement. So, you know, going forward, we need to tread carefully. When you say Lagos is a no man's land, that's wrong. They are indigents of Lagos. Even yeah. though Lagos has been the most liberal state in the whole of Nigeria, you can't go to the east to say you want to go and run for office as a non. It's not possible. There are some places you cannot go to and buy land. You can't go to the north, you know, and say you want to run for office. Where? Where do you come from? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. you, there are some, so if you talk about liberality, right, Lagos has been very liberal. You know, and it's almost like, okay, I think now, uh, now uh, because we they, we, they, we they give everybody free hand. Now, this free hand, mm -hmm. one can, you can't you can carry and rub pepper for my eye. So, and mm -hmm. guess what? The politicians understood that if they played that card, it would catch fire. And that was what just played out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, okay. when we want to evaluate things, let's say the mistakes these people made, mm -hmm. you understand? And so that we are able to trace it down to the root cause and solve the problem and nip it in the board. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about love, love is good. But you see, beyond love, we have to incite, I mean, start to create laws, policies. All the lawmakers that would create laws that says anybody that is, you know, so if you go and put out a tweet or you put out a post that, you know, look at the, the guy that put out a post. I can't even mention that post. You know, when he was talking about in, in, in the history of whatever, this will be the last time the Igbos will interfere. That is very insightful. Do you understand? So if we start to know those kinds of people, just catch them and use them as scapegoats, then you know that, yes, you know. So those kinds of things, let us be careful in, in those kind of statements. But let, let, I think we have a, our first caller for the evening, Benga from Lagos. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, what you guys are discussing today is really interesting, and um, I feel so sad about the way things have turned up. Um, my, my friend is, um, is a Limbo guy for over 30 years. He's been my best friend till I die. Unfortunately, like what Elise said, any time it comes to politics, we fail to realize the games these guys play. They are the same game as politics, and it's going to be tribalism or religion. Those are the two cards they play for us in Nigeria. I want to elaborate because I go online and I see the things that um, our friends from the Southeast say. I understand how bad they feel now. Even as a Yoruba guy, I feel so terrible about it. But I need them to understand one thing. Before the politics thing, before this whole election thing started, I don't think there was this time, uh, maybe a few months back or, yeah, that a Yoruba guy looked at his evil friend and started to abuse him. And I noticed on Sunday, there was an election in BGC. I didn't see anybody prevent anyone from voting. So we should be able to identify where these things are coming from, the kind of people that are being used. The normal guy, the normal Yoruba guy, has plenty of friends. Look, like you said, um, the Igbo's best friend in Nigeria are the Yorubas. They might not like to hear that. Because we Yorubas are so loving and so kind to everybody. I see Yoruba guy. If you are your Yoruba person and you're fighting an Igbo guy unjustly, I will fight you. Because it's foremost a human being like you. And I think that's what a lot of Yoruba people stand for. But when it comes to politics, these guys will bring up these ethnic cards every night at them. So let our friends from the South East understand. Now it's just politics. But you see, that politics, where would they talk now? It ain't done damage a lot of things. But Mary, you wanted to respond to yes, something. I'll come the, to you see. Even the lawmakers that were saying, are they for us? Hmm. 
What I'm trying to say is, we can't wait. So what if the laws never come? What if the laws yeah. never come? Are we going to continue to live in chaos? The change that we want starts from you and I. We're working together. The three of us, we're not from the same place, but we're able to work together. Or exist. So in your own little small community, we can start it up. We can keep promoting it. Oh, let's not, you know, give reasons. Give people reasons. I don't think a, 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 a poor... Um, maybe you're a bad person. If an evil person gives that that man now money or like helps him in a situation, I don't think that person will go back home and still be shouting whatever like um, tribalism. But definitely, when politics comes into play, they can play on such people because they're ignorant. They don't know. See, okay. So let me let me explain how I think I see these things. Okay. As simple as you are feeling a form. They should take out that part that says uh, your ethnic, uh, what's it called? What local government are you from? What ethnic whatever are you from? Just tell, check, ask for where you live. Your address is okay. Do you understand? So because you see, as long as for every time you want to do deal with anything, like maybe government forms, and, and you, you keep on, they keep on reminding you of your state of origin. They keep on reminding you of your whatever. You know, it, it plays back. So, I mean, yesterday when we were talking, it just occurred to me that me that love to do work, charity work and all of that, you know. So tomorrow if I decide to say, okay, oh, I think I want to move my charity to this um, region, you know, nobody would even recognize what it is that I'm doing. Even though I don't, I'm not doing it for recognition. But I'm just saying to you that it's almost looking like, please, anything you want to do that is good, just go take it to your home. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be. Because it won't last. Let me take Charles from Portacourt. Hi, good evening. We are good, though. We thank the Lord. In the past few days, I've never really been very picking about the way and the suggestion things have been going on in this country. It's really very unfortunate that we have the kind of bigotry and private cars playing on in this country at this point in time. You have people like that, very particular, they don't want to fight people. And hopefully, now, we have not heard anything from the so-called president elect. Even the president, even the government of Lagos, and when we come out to this house itself, from those comments made by those people, Lagos was not given by the government to know. Other ethnic people were contributing to building Lagos. And it cannot be attributed to one particular side. If the so-called people, like for example, the United States came in and they built Lagos all alone, how come they know you that they are not going to give the state of this or this state of this level? For instance, if uh, Abuja is to move from Peter Capital Center to one, people from Guadalupe would then come and tell you that they own, they put the view. It's not all that way. Going forward, I don't expect some of these people that will expect to come and complain something. They are not saying anything. And you look at people who do the people from other side are the are the are the problem. For instance, there always people who will fight people. This is all good. And for people that are expecting the government, the new government, government to come and do magic, I don't really expect anything from them because if they cannot distance themselves from this comment made by people like Biden, I don't really expect anything from, from the new government. So, Absolutely. And, and I agree with you because there are notable people that have gone online to, to, to tweet or put out posts on that tribal bigotry, none of them have been arrested by, by DSS. The pres all the president elect, the governors elect, most of them, none of them have come out to strongly condemn it. Do you understand? So it, it's, it, it's just a Nigeria problem, eh? It's plenty. You see, let me come to you. Love. Well, spread love. Spread love. It is more than English language. So <laughs> I don't even know where to start again. But the key thing for me is another angle we can actually look at this from. Another way we can actually learn to heal and change the mindset of people is via education. I am a lover, a fan of education, as you know. And the best way we can actually do this is to catch them young. You know, why we had a, a, a show on this a few um, years ago or some years back and uh, two, two years actually. And we talked about orientating the mindset of the younger generation. How do we do this? 
by inculcating the values that we really want them to have. If we start from this angle, I, I don't want to say it as an utopian, I don't want to believe that it can be an utopian thought because it's quite possible. We just, we got here by people feeding us with a particular narrative. It's all about the narrative for me, okay? We got here by the number of people, by a, a set of people feeding us a particular narrative. And that narrative has eaten into the society in so many ways, in diverse form, that it has, you know, read the uh, different forms that we cannot even know where to cut it from because we will hurt ourselves in the process. Mm. So we need to uh, um, look at what, like Mary said, we need to look at what we can do for ourselves. <laughs> and that is through love. Absolutely. I, we I have know. spread so much hate in the system. I get we you. We have spread so much so hate in the system so that Nigerians, before we used to be jolly good fellows, we just like to have fun, we just like to, you know, go out and have a good, a jolly good time. But now all we are thinking of is survival. And when you are on that survival mode, your temper is short. Anything can just trigger it. And anger is another thing. It just goes off radar. So yes, I agree with Mary. Love is crucial and critical at this point in time for us to move forward. <laughs> laws might not take us there, Sayuame, because we have laws already on ground no, 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 and we no. haven't gotten what we've Listen, asked for. Not They've the not point. listened to us when we the called laws. them to order as well. You see, it's not about the laws. It is about implementing those laws. And enforcement. Enforcement. Do you understand? It's see, because... That's, that's we... my problem. It isn't about... And we, we not all know that it's about enforcement. So the law is not what we need. It's what we can do for ourselves. There was something that um, was, uh, was this um, assassinated president that he said in America. He said, "Think not what you can not think not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country." It all starts with us. We have to take that bold step, make that move, and maybe somewhere along the line, it will cause a ripple effect. Okay, let us take comments from our co Arrest my team. Thank you, see. Let's take comments. <laughs> <laughs> and no fish out, because this one now they see love we work, but you see, laws we also work. Yes. If I take you to jail it and you see, you see somebody say go to jail. Are you going to raise a raise a petition? Ah. We've raised petition tirelessly. <laughs> Continue. Take your message. Don't don't face me this <laughs> night. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the cause of your problem. Okay. Hi, ladies. With the president set uh, last Saturday, the ruling government has lost the infantry to correct any ills in the society because they allowed impunity to fester to the point of depriving the citizens of their legitimate right to vote. They lost any. They lost any shade of authority to correct anyone for wrongdoing and that is tantamount to anarchy absolutely how ridiculous can we be as a uh, people sorry how ridiculous can we as a people reject the very thing that makes the most developed countries brilliant enough for developing countries to keep copying in any way and every way would people jab out to those countries if they behaved as tribalists? As tribalists, a lot of people are racist. I mean, these things is not actually common to just Nigerians. I yeah. mean, in South Africa there was xenophobia. Even in Ghana, at some point, they say, I mean, there is racism everywhere, right? Um, and there's, you know, so I don't know. There, are, there are histories, past histories of even in Rwanda, the Hutus and the Tutsi. So they, they have all of those things happening. But the truth is that. You know, what, what was just shocking to most of us is that in this present age and time, when we've seen how much those kinds of incitement can actually, can, uh, you know, how far, they can how far it can go, the kind of effect it can have on... I mean, it's sad. It's sad. What do you say to people that are, have intertribal marriages? I am uh, Edo. I'm married to... What's it called? Adama. Isi is Edo. She's married to Igbo. I'm married you to know? Do you understand? You, know? you have children. 
you have children from so where do we go to do you get it doesn't make any sense Absolutely. let's take more comments take my comment. good evening my dear beautiful sisters of ways election aftermath how can we heal from tribal division my dear beautiful sister EC made two points firstly she said that people we people will move around with with who claim to be our best friends will end up being our worst enemies which is right secondly she said the only way to be healed from tribalism is to change our mindset and have total understanding amongst ourselves which i agree nj said that if we depend on tribalism we will wake up one morning and hear that nigeria is destroyed she is not far from the truth. Let us put aside tribalism to move forward. My name is Daniel Ilo, who is regular fan. Go ahead, Isi. All right, this is from Gift of Four, and she says, Good evening, ladies. The whole situation is so depressing. This way forward is for us as a citizen to understand that politicians are only manipulating us to achieve their ambitions. Because of our lack of empathy, oneness, and awareness, she said it all. Mm. Thank you. So, Should does I it speak coming from Kule, Kule Lawal? Mm -hmm. Okay, Kule Lawal said that he has always believed or stood for as a proponent of states of residence over states of origin to help curb the ethnic bias within the average Nigerian DNA. Not only would it curb that, it would also give every Nigerian a stake in any part of Nigeria. Absolutely. They pay their taxes. You want to fill so any form, they tell you state, state of origin. What is that for, for goodness sake? Just Pardon. tell me, where are you resident? Um, you fill the form. And I don't know what I'm saying. Do you get like, you, you what I'm saying? Maybe what country or Just, state. I mean, all this one that you're saying. What is that, or are you what, man? Somebody says on this issue, I will blame media houses like Plus TV, Arise TV, Channel TV, AIT, and TVC. You all encourage the division by inviting people who are divisive, uh, devices to your state. That's not it. You understand? You cannot blame it. You blame it on poverty. You understand? You blame it because, because let me tell you something. The elite people, they don't, there's no tribal anything around them. You see, but you see, because poverty has been weaponized, you, you can tell a poor man to do anything and he will do it. You know, Bingo. so poverty, ignorance, because what Isi said about education is very key. Ignorance and poverty, they are the two big major, what's it called, um, fuelers of all of these things. So we have to start deliberately. You know, they will try Mary's method and try to see if we can infuse love. But me, I want, I want people to start going to jail. I want people to start, you know, Pay when they give them sentences, when they penalties for that, you will stop it. You'll be very careful before you put out a statement. On that note, let them be held accountable. Absolutely. Thank you, Isi. Thank you, NJ. Thank you, Larry. I will love you. Don't worry. I love you. Regardless. <laughs> spread love. Spread love. We should spread love, right? Not Before war. we go, Mary says we should spread love. I love you. Love you know, and let's forgive each other and let's yes, move on, please. Yes, it's not really, it's not really nice what is happening out there. So please follow us on all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Um, where's my quote? Okay, so it says, um, when people have tried everything and have discovered that nothing works, they will tend to revert to what they know best, which is... Uh, which will often be tribe, the totem, and the taboo. I mean, we didn't even touch on totem and taboo, but hey, we will talk more on this conversation. Hopefully, we'll bring in more experts or so to talk to us. But please, let's spread love. Honestly, let's spread love. I know that the love, but I also want you know people to go to jail. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.